If you improve something, you better be able to measure the impact and learn from it. If you can, you really need to question why you are doing it, because it will be hard to know if you're right, wrong, or somewhere, you know, in, in the middle. This is Binyev, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the hard framework. Framework that Google uses for evaluating the impact of UX changes. Good design is informed design. I can count how many times I've had heated discussions about design solutions with everyone making subjective arguments like, I don't think it will work, or I don't like it, uh, and so on. And at some point, someone always throws the final punchline. Let's test it, or let's do A-B testing. You know, might actually be the right thing to do, but for that to work in practice, it's important to use the right metrics. And the biggest problem was that nobody could tell uh, what we were supposed to be measuring. And that's always a sign that your design process is broken. You start working without knowing the goal and without knowing how to define that. You're on the wrong track. That's where the hard framework comes in handy. The Google team has developed a few useful methods to help select and define appropriate metrics. To measure the quality of a user experience, the hard framework, and the goals uh, of your product or projects, the goal signal metric process. Simply put, hard stands for happiness, engagement, adoption, retention, and task success. To use this framework, a team will identify goals, signals, and metrics for each of the five categories of hard, as shown in the figure above. Goals are broad objectives. For happiness, a goal might be use it, find the app helpful. Signals indicate us that your team is making progress towards their goal. A signal might be user recommend the app to their friends. Metrics, quantifiable data points that indicate success or failure. You can measure how many users tend to recommend the app to their friends. These frameworks can be applied at different levels, from the type product to a specific feature. You don't uh, need to create metrics in all of these categories. You should choose the ones that are most relevant to your specific project. It can be happiness and adoption or some other combination. Before I get deeper into the details of this framework, I want to highlight a hidden benefit of how this framework could help you in your design career. So what are the hidden benefits of using the Google Hard frame Framework for you, for, for design? Measurable impact of your work. Now, if you want to rise or want a strong argument that your work has a positive impact on business, there's no better way than to talk about numbers. You know, Business people love numbers, and when you shape your design process to be tied to metrics, you have an objective way to name how your work has impacted the business, the actual measurable value you bring. Example, you have an annual review, and instead of mumbling about how good you are and so on, you provide the data that supports your claim, that your idea increased the conversion rates, like example, by 20%, that the change you offered minimized error rates by 40%, and that this idea put extra money in the company's bank account. Now, let's go back to the hard framework. If you look at the order of each metric, it, you know, it doesn't seem right. I think it's easier to remember the acronym hard, but for brainstorming, it's better to use that order. Adoption. Task success, engagement, retention, happiness. Since it follows a customer journey or you know, life cycle. Adoption. Adoption is quite simple and usually refers to the number of users who use a feature or product you know, for the first time. Signals of adoption can include downloading the app, signing up for an account, using new features, 
metrics, could be download rate, uh, registration rate, feature adoption rate. Like example, I have my course for designers called Selvi Design. In this course, I teach designers how to find green clients and sell to them. Check the link in the description. So, what I could track, uh, you know, for my course, it's conversion rate, which is how many users visit the landing page and what percentage sign up for the course or sign up for the newsletter. After onboarding, you may want to track whatever the user can achieve their goals with your products or new features. Thus, success refers to the efficiency, effectiveness, and error rate of a user completing a task with your product's workflow. I can give you a few ideas of signals. Incomplete or complete a task. Time to complete the task. Metrics, error rate, time to task completion, task completion rate, and etc. A task is more efficient if it takes less time to complete effectively. It is effective when it either completes the task with a higher quality or a higher hit rate. Example, I can track how many people completed the course and how much time it took them. For blog posts, I might track how many readers scrolled all the way to the end of the article and how much time it took them. For complex systems, I can track the time uh, and amount of errors to complete the task. Engagement measures the frequency, intensity, or depth of user engagement with your product. How many users have uh, visited the product in the last seven days, month, or etc.? How often do they visit my website, or what is the open rate for my emails? Retention measures users' continuous, repeated engagement with the future or product over the time. This allows you to track uh, how often people use your product or feature or buy your new offerings and etc. Happiness. How do users feel about your product? Are they satisfied with the quality? Basically, you need measures of user attitudes which are often collected via surveys. For example, satisfaction, a perceived uh, ease of use, and net promoter score. Net promoter score uh, is a very great tool that asks customers how likely they would recommend your product or service to others on a scale of zero to 10. It is calculated by subtracting the percentage of customers who answer the NPS question with a six or worse, known as detractors, from the percentage of customers who answer with nine to 10, known as promoters. Passive score of seven or eight do not actively recommend a brand, but are also unlikely to harm it through negative word of mouth. Given the available range of minus 100 to plus 100, any score above zero reads as good because it indicates that a company or a product has more promoters than detractors. Top rated companies typically have an NPS of 70 or above. The Hard Framework is a super great tool for product teams, freelancers, designers, developers, and product owners. In conjunction with the goal signal metric process, it brings business metrics into your design process. In short, the data you collect helps you have more fruitful discussion and is a powerful tool to support your design and business decisions. In the description, you'll find a free uh, hard framework worksheet that will help you use this framework. Let me know what you think about this framework in the comment section. Maybe you have some great usage examples, or maybe I forgot to mention something. For more great content, subscribe to my channel or visit my website. Thank you, subscribe, and see you soon. Millions, gazillions, reasons to buy, sell the design that opens freedom. Not an easy button to riches, but switches you to richness.